Whether you're creating characters that only you will use for personal work, or especially if you're creating a character that will be handed off to someone else, it's usually not enough to create a single drawing or key pose and be on your way. Creating turnarounds or character sheets is a great way to establish things about your character thoroughly, and figure out certain ambiguous things about them before you put them into use. Even so, you may have struggled in the past with turning a character around, so let's help you out with that and figure out a cool way to present the fuller picture of our characters. I said a few months ago that I'm trying to spend more time on characters. Instead of, say, doing one illustration for them in a video and sort of worrying that the excitement is now gone and I have to come up with something new for the next, to really develop more art of them. Some related elements like background and props and stuff like that, along with iteration. So the subject of our turnaround today is going to be Biko, which I think is appropriate. I've been working on a story to tell with him, he's got plenty of props, and he's also, if you've been following along the last few weeks, the figurehead of my new project this year called Biko's Backpack, a monthly delivery of new art-based stuff like this. Check out more at patreon.com slash bageldenizen. Now I already have a few drawings, what you might call key poses of Biko. A key pose tells you something about the personality of the character. It puts them into action, it does some storytelling. A key pose or two is a nice thing to include on a character sheet, especially because turnarounds are usually rather static, technical diagrams. But when you only create key poses, or in-action drawings, there's a lot of hand-waving you can do about details, how a piece of anatomy works and stuff like that. With a turnaround, you are confronted face-to-face -face with your decision-making. Turnarounds are especially helpful if you'll be handing off a character to a modeler, or even an animator. It's a way of establishing not just how a character looks in multiple dimensions, but things like rules, what your character can and can't do. If they're stylized, what the limits of something like an exaggeration or expression are. This sheet from Adventure Time, for example, establishes what Jake the dog should and shouldn't do, even though he's a simplistic, shape-shifting dog. For this key pose of Biko that's already done, everything is rendered and polished in this style that I'm really happy with. But for his turnaround, there will definitely be a presence of lines. Again, this is like a diagram, a tech spec. The purpose of the turnaround isn't necessarily to look nice, it's to be clear and accurate. My first step is going to be to draw Biko from the front. And to keep him even, I'm going to keep the symmetry tool on for bulking out the main shapes. This will help us if we want a back view as well later on. As I do this, even though this particular drawing is flat, I'm thinking ahead to the future. What are the three-dimensional shapes that make him up? What's the placement and depth of these shapes? I'm going to create the backpack as well, but on a separate layer. That way I can remove it and keep him standalone if need be. Next I'll begin to draw the side view of Biko. One of the basic tips for making turnarounds at this point is that horizontal lines should match up across your character, from view to view. So if I were to draw a line across Biko's eyes in the front, they'll match up with the side view. A lot of times people struggle with the side view of their character at this point here. There's two reasons for this, and it comes down to construction and posture. If you're struggling with the way that your character looks from the side, try and get a better idea of what basic 3D shapes your character is made up from in a three-quarter or front view, and then try to flesh that out in a way that makes sense. Remember, start working big and generally, then add more details and complications to the form. With the posture of your character, a lot of times folks will draw their characters standing so rigidly that it doesn't follow the natural arc of someone standing. So for example, even though Biko here isn't human, the human shoulders, spine, and pelvis are not straight up and down when in a neutral position. The pelvis tilts forward, and the spine has an arc to it. So the same goes for the legs. Oftentimes legs are drawn too rigidly, or the feet terminate too far forward. It might be helpful for you to start the side view of the character without the arm there at all, and simply make an indication for where the arm connects to the shoulder on the torso. Then later you can create a side view of the arm. Remember the orientation of the shape of something. So for example, if Biko's collar is sort of pointed downward, and we see a little at the top of it in the front view, that means that it will match that in the side. Now since we have those out of the way, there's a relatively straightforward way to get most of the back view done. Since our view of the front is perfectly straight on, we can use the same silhouette, flipping it if it isn't perfectly symmetrical, and then filling in the interior details. Same idea as just now, remember which way things are rotated and their orientation. If you haven't already done so, now is a great point to create a three-quarter view as well. 
To really flesh out this character's sheet in addition to the key poses and turnaround, we might want to include detailed looks at any props that they have, multiple expressions, and poses that show the extent of their movement. Maybe there's some special circumstance with the character, like for Biko he's made of this gelatinous healing substance, so I might want to record something like hat leaves an impression after being on his head when taken off, or something like that. I don't like that idea though. At the end here I end up creating an easy to use color palette for all the flat shades to use with Biko, and I draw the gauntlets on their own so that you can see the little health symbol that glows if he's actually using that healing ability. Remember that the more that you add, the more you're helping either the person you hand it off to or yourself at a later stage. Especially when a character is going to be animated or used in a comic, sheets like this are an essential help. There were definitely points even in this process where you can sort of lose yourself or start drawing something that ends up being wildly inaccurate to the other views. The amount of precision that this process takes means that I'd advise you not to take this route with every character you draw. There's no real room to make lively, dynamic, expressive drawings, and it is sort of restrictive. So leave this process for after you've figured the character out through drawings that evoke their story and personality. Those things are most important. It's been a pretty nice year on Character Design Forge. We started out talking about Kirby, we got tons of lovely updates to procreate and walked you through how to use it, finally launched my comic parcel, did a whole new series on the fundamental principles of character design, talked about telling stories, burnout, how to be a craftsman out in the woods, actually spent a lot of time in the woods. We finally fixed Sonic's design, built a new set in the same closet-sized office, redesigned the Crash Bandicoot universe, illustrated and animated the new intro and aesthetic of the channel, talked about same face syndrome, which kicked off several months of videos actually doing well again, Procreate brought me out to Lightbox, which was the most surreal, amazing time, and I hope to table there next year. We talked to Max, met Chris, hung with Omni, tormented Nick about Peppa Pig. We consulted with a professor of pseudoscience on how to get the bad drawings out, art that builds an audience. We crossed 100,000 subs, I guess the plaque is in the mail, brought Tay on board both to help out and to head up some creative projects, rearranged the house and moved into a new office space, took a few months to start secretly working on Biko's backpack, and finally made art that I'm happy with when I look at it. So right now especially we don't know what's coming next in a couple of contexts that I can't really talk about and it's honestly a little worrisome. It's stupid things really, they just aren't really in our control. But I'm too grateful for you being here and I'm too stubborn to stop any of this, so we're really just getting started. Thank you for a great year everyone. You can keep my forge burning on patreon.com slash bageldenizen, get everything from the previous tiers as you go up, and Biko's backpack is new original art in your mailbox every month and it supports an independent artist's original work directly. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at Bagel Denizen. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating. He forgot to say see you next year. I'm taking the rest of the year off. <laughs>